Hey everyone, a little while ago I made a video where we created this image in Inkscape based on an old t-shirt design I had. If you've not seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but today I had a response on that video from Matt B. Uh, he's put, this is exactly what I need to learn. So off to a good start. But <laughs> you're not telling us what instrument you're using, uh, what mouse button or keyboard button you're pressing. Uh, or explaining how you do things like putting down the circles. Uh, do you have another video that explains things in more detail and slower? Thanks in advance. So uh, this video is, is my response to that comment. Uh, I'm going to go back into this image and we're going to break things down. Um, go, go through some key areas like the shadows, the wheels. Um, I think I missed the, um, the window out. The, it got lost in the editing process on the first video. So we're going to break things down, go a bit slower, uh, explain things in a bit more detail. And uh, between the two videos, I'm hoping that you guys can uh, follow along. So uh, let's get started. So first up, I'm using Inkscape version 1.1.2, which I believe is the latest version of Inkscape. And I've already gone ahead and opened the original image of the, uh, the project from the, the previous video. And I've also uh, moved over the finished image just above and I can use that as reference to show you what I'm doing. So uh, to create the, the shadow under the car and around the exhaust and the wheel arches there, we're going to use the Bezier pen tool, which is located just here on the toolbar. And we're also going to need to use the selection tool, which is the first one at the top and the edit paths by nodes tool, that's S and N. For those, you don't have to use the keyboard shortcuts, but it does save time on a long project. If you're not familiar with the Bezier pen tool, hit B, and it'll bring up this little pen and cross symbol. And basically, you're, you're going to click on the left mouse button anywhere on the screen just to create some straight lines to create a selection. And you'll see it's like an elastic line on the end there. I'm going to hit enter and just complete that line. Uh, but the Bezier pen tool, the, the main strength of it is curves. So if you just click again and then click somewhere else, but hold down the left mouse key, don't let go of it, you'll be able to stretch out that curve in, and manipulate it in lots of different ways. Now, for going around edges and curves, uh, like tires and body lines, this is great, but it does tend to want to guess what your next move is going to be. So if I release the left mouse button now, it kind of makes it bend one way or the other and it's difficult to get get the exact arc if i just click somewhere else on there and you'll see it's kind of gone back to a straight line and it kind of flip flops between straight and curved and i find that quite distracting to use so i'll just click somewhere else and hit enter and then pick up the um, edit paths by nodes tool by hitting n on the keyboard i can now click on any of these straight edges and manipulate those how I want anyway. And if I still can't quite get it, the curve to match what I'm trying to follow, you can just double click anywhere on the line and create a new node, which again, you can edit and manipulate how you want. Uh, and I find this way much quicker than trying to do it all in one with the, the curves as it's probably supposed to be used. So I always start off with the straight edges and I'll just make quick selections all the way around. Uh, don't worry about the curves, just make straight selections. And then once you've completed your selection, you can go back in with the edit pass by nodes tool and get it spot on. So now you've familiarized yourself with the Bezier pen tool, we can use those skills now to start making our selections on the shadow area. So I'm just gonna hit B, uh, probably start down this front corner. I'm just gonna hold down control and roll the mouse wheel up to zoom in and I'm probably going to start on that bit there so we're just going to make straight sections it's going to look a bit odd because we're not following the curves but it will make sense once i get into it and you can jump across uh, huge arcs like this you can either do it in small sections or you can try and do it in one. Uh, I sometimes find doing it in one, you can kind of lose your place, and, and or not on a wheel because it's obvious what you're trying to do, but on smaller sections 
when you come back to it, you can sometimes forget what you were trying to achieve. So uh, what we're going to do is, I think, include up to about there, jump across there, and then straight down into that. I want to include, sorry, exclude the um, the black sill trim there. So I'm going to stay on this side of it so um, we can differentiate this from the body later on. Let's just control and scroll down on the mouse wheel just to get a better view. I'm going to try and do this in one hit. That in one hit and zoom back in. Bit of a curve there. And then same again, just jump across. There's a nice little curve there, so we can jump across that one. The under tray, I'm not too worried about because all that's going to be shadow, so we'll lose that anyway. Come up to a corner, jump across the corner. Don't worry about cutting off the exhaust because we can add those in later. Another little bend there so you can jump across that. I'm only really interested in the black sections at this point. Another little curve there. And then, uh, this is a good example of, of losing your place. So you could jump across there because that's a curve. You're going to come back and we're going to budge that out to make the curve. But uh, you can forget sometimes that that's what you're going to do and you'll end up leaving it as a, a flat edge. So you just got to check your work as you go around. Let's put a little curve in there. A curve in there. And they should all make sense once I go back in. Now, when it comes to the shadow, um, well, when I took this photograph, I was trying to get a, a nice hard edge to show the shadow, but I couldn't quite get the, the lighting right, so I had to fudge it, really. Um, so I'll do that again in a second. And what you can see through the bottom of the car there, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to blank that off as uh, a solid. I'm just showing there. Yeah, I, I put in the the tyre and then just put a little line in there to break that up. But uh, I left that section out because you start adding too much detail, it detracts from the, the effect. So I'm just come straight down into that corner. The back edge of the shadow I can follow because that's correct. It's just about here it gets a little bit. I have to start to improvise a little bit. So I'll do the same again. I'll probably put something about there. About there. And you know, if you make a mistake, it, it doesn't matter. You can it's all easily editable, so we can fix it later on. Uh, I think I'll probably leave all that as yellow so you can see it see it on the screen. Just need to turn the stroke off and turn the fill on. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity of that layer using the um We've gone into that the fill and stroke section tab up here, and I'm just going to drop the opacity with the uh, shadow section selected, so we can see the photo underneath. So now we're going to hit the N key, and we're going to start to manipulate this to fit the image. And anyway, you, you get like a hard. If I just uh, click off that, you see that there's a hard point there. If you just reselect it, hover over the, uh, or click on the node, hit control and click on it again. It kind of softens it up, but you will have a little bit of extra work to do to bring these back in line.
And I'll just click off it again and show you that's nice, nice smooth curve now. So you might have to do that a few times, but it's still quicker, I think, than uh, working with it on the fly as you go around. So again, just holding down control and using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then we'll put just a little bit of a curve on that just to take it away from it being a completely straight edge. Just give it a bit of form. And pull that one out a bit like that. Pull that out a little bit like that. Not happy with that bit there. It's a little bit falling a bit short there. Look, it's just uh, that's got it. So again, just holding down Control, clicking on the node, and it kind of averages it all out, so it's nice and smooth. Just whip around this back section. Oh, actually, just make this. It's fairly straight, but I think I might just put a bit of a, an edge on it there, like that. Now normally when I make these videos, I usually work in silence on uh, screen capture and then go back in and do the uh, the voiceover separately. And I'm not doing that today, which is uh, a little bit scary, actually. <laughs> try not to talk about the weather. That's, 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 the, that's the thing. Uh, I'm trying to stay on topic. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of a tight curve there, so that's a good case for it. If I double click on that line, I can add a node, pull that up a little bit. Let's just have a look what's happened there. Let's just put that little anchor back on top of the node and smooth that out. I mean, this isn't going to matter too much because that's actually quite a small detail. And when you zoom right out, it's, it's going to be barely noticeable. But it's just good practice to try and keep everything neat and tidy as you go around. I have been thinking about maybe uh, offering the the service, not service, the um, opportunity for for viewers out there. If you if you're watching this, I can maybe do a uh, tutorial. If you send me a picture of your car, I'll maybe try and do a, a video on on a viewer's car, um, providing that you own the vehicle and. Um, or you have the permission of the vehicle owner for me to do it, I'll be quite happy to have a go at one of your vehicles out there. Again, I'm just going to add another node in there just to pull that section down, make it a bit smoother. And later on, we'll come back in, I'll, we'll, I'll show you what to do with the exhaust and, and we'll just show you that section on the bit that's finished. I'll show you how to sort of figure all this out. All we want at the minute is just a nice uh, block shadow. Let's just pull that wheel in. Put a nice curve on that. That's okay. Again with this, just pull this out a section uh, a little way. That's it, and then. This bit you've got to kind of just um, it'd be easier to take a proper photograph with the shadow in on the floor, so you could just make it look right. What did I do? What did I do with that? Sort of curved, right? Uh, not happy with that. It needs to be a bit taller. Let's put it to about there somewhere. Gentle curve on the roof line. I right, just push that one in a little bit. What does that look like? Edges very harsh. Let's just 
soften that off. Um, yeah, I just double I clicked once to select it and then clicked again to bring up the anchor points. So I'm just going to let left mouse just bring that down a little bit, just make it a little less aggressive. That's okay. And then we can go back into opacity, turn it all the way up, uh, change it to black just by clicking on black. That's like the first section complete. I'll just pick up the selection tool and just move that out of the way so you can see, see it as a standalone shadow. Okay, so the next section we're going to tackle uh, making the wheels. Uh, we need to put the, the shadow back in position on the photograph. So I'm just going to go Control Z to pop it back on there. Uh, I'm going to reduce the opacity so we can see the photograph underneath again. And for this, we're going to be creating uh, ellipses using the ellipse tool or E on the keyboard. Uh, and we're also going to be using uh, from the path menu at the top here, difference. So it's a lot of um, duplicates and a lot of subtra subtractions or differences um, to make the wheels. It's fairly straightforward. I say that now. <laughs> it should be fairly straightforward. So I'm going to hit E. Let's make our first wheel. So uh, you'll see that the on the photo, the wheels are quite small on, on the image. Um, I made them a bit bigger just to give it a bit more presence, a bit more interest. So let's just put down a first ellipse. And what I'm going to do is try and match the shape of the wheel. Let's just draw that out there. I'm going to hit S. And then I'm going to start manipulating this shape to match the wheel itself. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to hold down Control uh, to maintain the proportions and just enlarge it. Let's just have a quick look back on the original one. Let me go a bit bigger. Yeah, something like that. Okay, what we need to do now is go Control D. And that duplicates that shape. So we're just going to move the top one out of the way. And I need to punch that first ellipse out of the shadow. So I'm going to click on it to select it. And then I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the shadow. And then we're going to go to Path and Difference. And that knocks out a hole. If I just change the color of the shadow, you'll see it's uh, it's made a hole there. So um, let's just go back to, oh, actually, I'll leave it at yellow for now. So we're going to reintroduce our first ellipse. And then hold down Control and resize it. That's about right there somewhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get it as close as I can to the uh, the original. And then I'm going to go Control D again to duplicate that one. Let's change the color to green so we can see what we're doing. And hold down Control and shrink it a little bit. Somewhere there. Uh, let's move it up a bit. That's it. Okay, and then I'm going to go Control D again and move that out of the way. And I'm just going to zoom in by holding down Control and using the center mouse wheel. I'm going to select the green ellipse and then hold down Shift and select the blue one. And then we're going to go Path, Difference. And now let's just have a look what we've got. Uh, so we've got our, our rim and a space and we need a center of the wheel. So let's reintroduce that again. Shrink it down. And then we're going to go Control D again. Move it back out of the way. Let's change the color on that and make it red. And we can, we want to maintain this one. Let's hold down Control. Shrink that down to make it about the size of the center cap look. And then I'm going to go uh, hold down shift. We've got the red one selected already. So hold down shift, select the green one and go path 
difference again. And then we can put all these back to black. So it, the process is quite simple, but it's just a bit of messing around. Let's just bring all the opacities back up. I'll not group these together. Let's just do that now. I'm just going to drag over the photograph and get all the black in. Uh, and then we can just go path union. And that will make it all one selection. There we go. Not quite the same, but not far off. Uh, but that's that's the uh, the general process, and I did the same on the back wheel as well. 